Globi is in uh, the, sh uh, the name Globi is a short for global health. Uh, and I saw an opportunity several years ago to be able to uh, use drones as a tool to fill a much needed gap, both in terms of um, public health supply chain logistics, but also uh, data collection for prevention and response. Oh, okay, yeah, this is um, an old presentation I sent in, so this could be a bit uh, interesting, but uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> We do at Globi have an innovative look at the at the future, um, and we believe very much in being part of creating the future. Um, so that's uh, also at the core of our company. And our mission, as I'm sure you guys already saw before, is to be able to create a better future with drones. Um, and we do that primarily to through two of our drone services: uh, drone delivery and drone data. Um, and as mentioned previously, we just recently partnered with uh, Flypoles, um, so we're now able to um, use the Flypoles drone system to carry out uh, our services. Many times the reality looks like this, which is problematic from several um, point of aspects. Um, both from logistical um, perspectives, but also that it's in areas like this that many times disease outbreaks start. And what's also always crucial then is of course time. And at Globi we have developed a drone and AI system where we are able to uh, use drones to collect data uh, and then analyze and quickly visualize the results from that data. Uh, particular target to, towards um, global health uh, towards the area of global health. And we see that these types of technologies uh, have a potential to help uh, respond to uh, disease outbreaks in a more efficient way, uh, both from uh, an ethical and economical point of view. So what's key here is, of course, data. Uh, and at Globi, we use photos as data, and you always need a lot of data in order to have uh, accurate results. So what we have been doing is that we've used drones to collect uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of drone imagery uh, of different objects and different conditions on the ground so that we can learn from there, generalize and predict, and then use AI visual image recognition to automatically recognize these objects or conditions on the ground. So if we have 55,000 drone photos from, from, from a flight, it takes quite some time to, to manually go through these and analyze these. Uh, and by using artificial intelligence, this can be done automatically and much faster. Uh, and by also using this technology, we're able to count, for example, the number of households in an area, which could be also quite key when responding to any type of disease outbreak or natural disaster. Uh, many times it's unknown, um, the number of households that live in the area, which is obviously uh, key data um, in order to try to uh, respond as efficient as possible. Can also recognize water underground, which is also an interesting feature for several reasons, obviously also within the agriculture sector, but also from, from a global health um, standpoint, since um, water bodies uh, on the ground are usually a contaminating source of different type of outbreaks. And then when you put these together, you are able to have a better understanding of what the situation looks like on the ground, how many houses could be in a potential risk area, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I often get the question if we don't use satellite data. Um, yes, uh, we do to some extent, but many times satellite data is not sufficient. Um, as you see in this picture, many times it's just not good quality enough. Um, you also don't necessarily have satellite data from all areas around the world. And satellite data usually lags in time. So if something has happened recent, um, satellite data is uh, most likely not the most optimal source. And last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do then use these um, drone photos as data and then we put them all and stitch them together into digital maps. Uh, which, of course, are being um, a good information source uh, for communities and our clients on the ground. Um, it's also good in the sense that it speaks every language in the world, basically. So if everyone are looking at the same maps, they have a good understanding of what's going on, and the risk of misunderstandings decrease as well. 
You can then choose what type of information that you are interested from the digital maps, and you can zoom in on specific objects to get a better understanding of what they look like. Um, and you can count, for instance, in this district, there were 299 thatched roofs within, uh, within this area. Um, you can then also measure the distance to, for instance, the closest latrine, which is another uh, source of contamination, um, and by then also be able to define certain risks. And as mentioned before, we are pioneering this technology uh, together with UNICEF in Malawi in the, uh, in the current cholera response work going on, and has just recently also applied this to um, be able to identify malaria breeding sites. So look forward to give you all an update on that next year here, hopefully, um, and hopefully also be able to include some results from our work here in Tanzania. I already mentioned the workflow, how we work, um, and again, I like to uh, encourage any local drone pilots to come and talk to me, and, and if they're interested in collaboration, that's all what we are for. Partnership is at the core of our company, um, so please come up and talk to me after today's talk if, if that sounds of interest to you. Um, I don't want to repeat myself too much, so I'll skip a few slides here, but something worth mentioning uh, is obviously that um, drones are not here to take over from ground transportation. Um, ground transportation is still obviously going to be key, um, but it could fill um, a much needed gap, um, especially uh, obviously when what you're transporting um, is light, um, valuable and time sensitive. Yeah, this version of the uh, uh, presentation has uh, some images from our testing in the drone corridor, um, where we partnered with uh, HemiQ, which is a point of care uh, diagnostic device company, uh, present in 134 countries in the world, in, in most of the African countries. Um, they are, of course, interested to see how they can improve their last mile uh, deliveries. Um, so it's been really interesting to, to work with them over the past year as well. Uh, and this is um, uh, an image from uh, one of the deliveries that we did uh, using the FlyPlus drone system uh, with a HemiQ point of care testing device in the cargo box that you see underneath there. Um, the longest delivery that we've done to date in Malabar is 66 kilometers, carrying around uh, one kilos of payload. And here you see where the drone landed, took off from district hospital to um, rural health clinic with the uh, HemiQ box underneath it. Um, some of the challenges and opportunities going forward um, are um, primarily um, uh, these four or subcomponents of these four. Um, local regulatory frameworks, of course, crucial in order to operations to be carried out in a safe manner. Uh, local capacity, obviously, also very crucial, uh, both in terms of uh, pilots, but also engineering, uh, etc., in order to be able to repair um, if anything goes wrong, and also to be able to produce drones locally, etc., etc. Um, supportive infrastructure, of course. Um, drone ports, not least, um, but also in terms of power, um, and um, 3G connect connectivity, et cetera. Uh, and then at last but not least, costs. It needs to be economically feasible to use these type of technology or it would never be used at scale. Um, I think we're seeing a very good improvement here. Just over the past three years, drone technology has dropped quite significantly in price and the technology has become better. So there are quite some opportunities for the future. Um, and drones can be expensive, but they don't necessarily have to. There's a lot you can do with um, with cheaper technology, um, and also keeping in mind that building the maintaining and building uh, roads is also not not cheap, um, and it's important to also look at the cost of not using the drones. I think uh, at Globi uh, we like to think that we're only at the beginning of what's possible, and I really think that's the case. Uh, a few years ago, uh, talking about drones in these type of circumstances and what we witnessed today uh, during the demos was, uh, was very much uh, something that was uh, um, a visionary uh, mindset. But today we're seeing happening in, in quite a few places um, and hopefully that's the way it's going to continue. 
Uh, and with that, I would like to thank you very much. Please feel free to approach me after the talk and also to learn more about us on our website and on social media. Please feel free to follow. Thank you. <laughs>